bitch down and hit you on the block Ain't a janitor, but I hit you with a mop Better watch your friends, they quick to turn the odds And that bitch nigga will play you for a thot In a pin on Star Wars, yeah my shit go to the top Alright you little freak biscuits, welcome back to another episode of Bruce gives you tips because you guys asked for them and uh, I don't know, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore Welcome to this video, enjoy a lot of you guys ask me questions. You're like, Bruce, how do I do this? How do I do that? Skiing wise, guys, I can help you out a lot with that. Life wise, I can't help you out with much. I'm all over the place. ADHD kicks in, we're gone. This is my bedroom. We were filming in a podcast studio. Yes, I have a podcast. We also had another studio in my basement. Everything got moved. I moved places. Sorry guys, you have to deal with this background for now. Today we're covering three mistakes that all new skiers make, really. Like, if we're being honest, if you're a new skier, you're probably going to make these mistakes. I'm going to talk about the most common mistakes that you will make, and I'm also going to talk about how to avoid them and how to prevent these mistakes from happening or what to do when they do happen, as well as things you should consider and stuff when you're getting on the ski hill for the first time. All right, first things first, most skiers make this mistake. They don't take a lesson. They don't have any sort of idea what they're getting themselves into. If you're a new skier going on the hill, guys, most of the people that listen to this channel are like me. We're park rats. We know how to ski or B, we love to send. But if you're a new skier and uh, you've never been skiing before and you go out your very first day, you're trying to learn, you're by yourself, and you just get wrecked all day. I mean, it's not snowboarding, you don't slam quite as hard. Snowboarding, you catch that front edge or back edge, you go down hard. Snowboarding is a violent sport to learn at the beginning, especially without any experience in any kind of boarding sports. Skiing's a little more forgiving, but a lot of people do get hurt, man. Like, A, they can't stop. It's a snowplow, it's not hard. But if somebody teaches you how to do it, you'll know it. It takes you like 30 minutes, right? But if you don't, you can get pointed straight and then your only way out is to bail. Some people get too scared to bail and fall over and they just keep careening down the hill till they hit A something or someone. So I would say the first mistake people make often is they don't take a lesson or they don't go with a friend who's way more experienced. Skiing is one of those things that you can pick up fairly quickly at a beginner level. If you wanna to get to an extreme level where you're doing tricks like the ones that we do, that takes a lot more time. However, the learning curve, the learning curve is very fast at the beginning and then you kinda of plateau. Almost every ski hill that you'll go to does lessons. You don't have to pay for them guys like if you're somewhat athletic i honestly wouldn't be too worried about it i would definitely recommend going with a friend who has some experience though but also b guys lessons aren't super expensive and if you got a lot of money and you're gonna go skiing at Vail or something take a lesson you're gonna enjoy it more i would suggest getting a lesson or going with somebody who's way more experienced first of all it's a mistake because it'll just ruin your day if you're not good and you might not be as attracted to it and attracted to coming back and doing more and more because it's a really fun sport once you get into it whether you're just doing it for pure passion and get away, you throw your tunes in, you cruise groomers all day, you wanna go hit some powder on a really nice pow day, or you wanna just shred the park and get sandy. All right, number two, most common mistake people make is they don't bring the right gear, guys. Bringing the right gear sounds kinda lame, sounds kinda dumb, honestly. But I've skied in some pretty bad weather and some really shitty weather. I've skied in the Yukon a lot of years, almost every year I have a contest in Yukon at the beginning. And sometimes it's minus 30. If you don't have the right stuff, first of all, don't go on a minus 30 day, right? If you're just doing it for fun, that would be stupid. But you wanna dress appropriately, right? If it's really wet, you wanna wear something that's waterproof because you're just gonna get soaked and then you're gonna be cold and wet. Little kids, if you're going with your kids and you have young ones, if they're not properly dressed, it's gonna deter them from the sport so much as opposed to if they're just properly dressed, they're warm. Like if you send your like five, six year old kid out there and tell him to come along skiing with you and he's not dressed warm or he's cold the whole time or his feet are cold, he's not gonna wanna go again. So that's something you need to like think about we want more little sendy, sendy buggers out there. That's what I want. I want to see some kids launching themselves. So keep your kids warm. The other thing about the right gear is a helmet. Honestly, guys, 2021, we know how much brain damage sucks. I don't even wear a helmet in uh, the park sometimes. That's me playing with fire. I'm being stupid. But most of the time, I would say 95% of the time, I wear a helmet when I'm park skiing. But you should wear a helmet when you're all mountain skiing, man. A lot of people get really, really badly hurt all mountain skiing, especially new people like you guys will be uh, if you're watching this video. A lot of new skiers get really hurt. All it takes is one edge catch and you can whiplash your head, especially on a snowboard, right? So helmets are very important. Wear them, it's just not worth it. I used to work park staff at my local hill, Mount St. Louis, shout out to Mount St. Louis, best ski hill ever. When I worked park staff there, there would be three to four kids in the train park alone that would have to leave an ambulance a night. 
That's a lot of kids like that have to go with speed patrol because they get super hurt. Around the mountain, they probably have like 10 plus ambulance calls a day for people getting hurt. It just shows like a lot of new people coming down from the city and stuff. They try to go skiing for the first time. They don't know what they're doing. They A, didn't take a lesson. B, they just get a little reckless. Maybe you only break your arm or something if you fall, not a big deal. But if you fall and happen to hit your head or something like that, or you go out of control and you go into a tree or something, having that helmet, it can't hurt in any way, shape or form. So grab yourself a helmet, wear it when you're out there. It's just, it's just a, re it's reasonable, right? Like, come on, guys. Unless it's like a spring day and you want to take your shirt off and impress the ladies, you got some six pack abs, you know? Or ladies, if you vice versa, you know, you want to impress the guys. You catch one of my drift. Like, take the shirts off, guys. That's fine. We're going to cruise into tip number three quickly. But first, guys, check out the ASC online. I recently got these badass cards. They're badass cards, right? Officially a small business under Canada Post. So now we can ship things to you for cheaper, which is unreal. And guys, if you don't know what we're doing at the ASC, me and my friends started this to help support young up and coming action sport athletes because guys, there's no money in the sports like this. And for me personally, competing is like 20 grand a season. And a lot of these kids that are super talented and stuff. They just don't have the funds to, you know, compete and pursue their dreams. So our goal at our company is to support young up and coming action sports athletes, whether it's skiing, skateboarding, whatever it may be, we're here to support them, pay for events, provide exposure, things like that. We actually have raised over like $1,500 now, which is pretty insane. So I'm really stoked on that. And we have some events coming this year, which is going to be sweet, rail jams, etc. So go follow us on Instagram at action sports community. And we're also on a bunch of other things, whatever. The link will be down below. Um, number three is make sure you take your time and not to be reckless. Guys, I should not be telling you this. This is the exact opposite of what I do. I, everything I do is reckless for the most part. Honestly, guys, like I was saying with the helmets, it's pretty easy to get smoked. I honestly see kids get smoked every day at a ski hill. I get smoked every day at a ski hill. Most people that I know get smoked every day at a ski hill. Like it, it happens. So take your time and get into it. If you're somebody like me, you're a park rider. That's kind of who you are as a person. You're an athlete and you like to push the limits of what you can do. That's fine but learn a little bit before you start pushing those limits because if you get hurt and say you a break your leg or arm or something like that you're not going to be able to push those limits for another what six weeks to two like to three or four months because you're injured and you can't ski and train so not only does injury suck but also it's going to stop you from getting better at the sport that you're starting and you're not going to be able to push those limits more and more because you're hurt and then you have to restart where you're from or even farther back so push the limits safely if you're somebody who's very interested action sports and stuff like that especially park skiing for new skiers that just want to ski groomers and stuff like that guys take your time take lessons like we said earlier and uh work your way up like you can push it but a safe push is probably what i would recommend there's no there's no point in getting hurt take your time enjoy the sport for what it is and work your way up there's also a lot of crazy people out there guys that'll just bomb a hill straight you guys have probably seen the videos on jerry of the day and things like that they're new skiers they get out of control i'll probably throw a clip in this video for you guys but they just smoke things at the bottom of the log, like the ski racks and other things like that. If you smoke a ski rack because you can't stop being a new skier and you're trying to be reckless and show to your friends that you can go faster than them, A, get it on film so I can see it. B, probably don't do that because it's, it's dumb, like I said. And just as I promised guys in the beginning of the video, here's some tips and rules for you guys to know for the first time you go skiing. These are the ones that I would suggest you focus on. If you don't know this and you're a new skier, you should know this, so it'll help you. Rule number one, don't stop in the danger zone. And by danger zone, guys, I mean like, say two runs come together, they're merging. Don't stop in the middle of the run. A, if you're going to merge runs, I'll usually have a sign that says look up. You should probably look. The other thing is there's a lot of crests on hills like this, right? A lot of hills go from flat to very steep and then flat again. Don't sit right over the steep part where people can't see you because they might come cruising over there. A, they're going to try to jump off it if they're anybody like me or the other people on this channel. B, they're just going to go over it fast and not jump it. And then all of a sudden you're there and they can't get out of the way. They're going to have a bad time. You're going to have a bad time. And you're both going to get smoked. That's the new word of this video, smoked. I like this one. The other thing is too, if you're in the train park, guys, people fall all the time. Like I said, everybody falls all the time in the train park. But what you should do when you fall is get out of the way of the landing area. You don't fall, laugh about it, and then sit there with your friends because usually another person's coming behind you hit that feature. If you fall and you're legitimate, hurt take your time somebody will probably close the jump for you but you should try to get out of the landing area as fast as possible the other thing too is a lot of uh, people that are new to the park they sit on the knuckle of the jump jump is here knuckle is here all the way across where the landing is and they'll ski across 
but somebody hits the jump and you're like going across here, you can get landed on. And I personally have landed on two to three people, legitimately hit them in the air. Like I'm in there and they ski underneath me. I just smoke them. I'm like can't do anything about it, right? That, that's on you. If you lose a ski or something and you're in the landing, you can either run up and get it really quick. I would recommend that if you're new, I would recommend going off to the side, walking up and making sure nobody's coming or telling them the jump's closed with a simple signal like this. Going down and getting your ski and then leaving. People lose a ski, they're in the landing, they run up to get it and then they get smoked. Smoked is the word of the day. They get smoked, right? So off to the side, go up to the top of the knuckle where you can see if anybody's gonna hit the feature, tell them not to hit it, grab all the units you blew off, and then continue on your day and have a good time. Another tip slash rule is that the skiers in front of you, they have the right of way. They don't have eyes in the back of my head. I'm not that cool yet. I can't see what you're doing. I have the right of way. So you have to be aware if I'm gonna turn this way and watch out for collisions. It happens a lot. Nobody's at fault, but just don't hit each other. It's really that simple. We're not playing bumper cars on the ski hill, unless you really want to. That'd be a cool video idea, by the way. The last tip I have for you guys is don't don't cut people off in the lift line. Everybody does it. I sometimes, I'll admit it, I do it sometimes. A lot of park skiers are notorious for it. Um, people just think that's why what we do for fun is we cut people off in the lift line. Well, B, you guys move really slow, especially new skiers out there that are watching this video. You guys are slow in the lift line. C, sometimes I'll take singles lines or other people like us will take singles lines just to get up the hill faster, but don't cut people off. It's just a rude thing to do. Even in the train park, there's train park etiquette. So if you have like five people lined up for a jump or a rail or a box or something, usually it's first come first serve. Like obviously if you're a bunch of friends and stuff, you kind of just know who when to go, when not to go. If you're with other people that you don't know, you usually call your job. You say, I'm gonna drop next. That's what I would say, right? And then I would go next. That's usually how it works. Just that way there's no confusion because it's really annoying sometimes when you go to hit a feature and somebody cuts in front of you, hits it, and then you can't hit it. That's something that just bothers people sometimes. And it bothers me too, so. Try, try to avoid that. All right, guys, that's the video. Three common mistakes all new skiers make, things you should avoid, tricks and tips provided by yours truly. If you guys enjoyed this video, smash the like button. I really appreciate it. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. There'll be more like this coming because you guys love them and they do well in search as well. And guys, I'm a businessman at heart. And as Cindy, C-U-N, you know what? I'll see you guys in the next episode. Deuces, I'm out. Quickly before I leave you guys here, first of all, thanks for watching the end of the video. Second of all, I'm coaching people this year in skiing. So if you guys are interested in having me as your coach in skiing, message me on Instagram and I'll talk about it. I'm building basically a course slash program where I'm gonna coach people one-on-one. -on -one. And I'm also gonna have a full like playlist of absolutely everything from how to hit rails to jumps to stretch routines to how to get sponsors. And you guys can also message me and get coached by me literally whenever. Um, just I have to do it online because literally most of my audience is not gonna be where I'm at. I can't coach in person. Other than that, deuces, see you in the next video.